guys welcome back to the channel and if you're here for the first time my name is Priya and I'm a newly qualified doctor working in the UK my husband and I post regular videos on this channel regarding medicine travel faith and a little bit of everything so if you're interested do click the subscribe button now and the bell icon so you get notified every time we post a new video so I recently started working as an F1 in the UK and I'd like to share with you guys my experiences and the things I've learned over the past months. So in today's video, as you've already seen from the title, I'm going to be going through with you what I consider one of the most important aspects of being a junior doctor. And this is documentation. Actually, it doesn't just apply to junior doctors. Doesn't matter what stage in your career you're at, documentation still remains as one of the most important aspects of working as a healthcare professional. This applies to junior doctors, consultants, nurses, uh, physiotherapists, you name it, it applies to everyone. So about 90% of a job as an F1 is to scribe, whether that be the examination of the patient, the history of a patient, or a conversation you've had with another medical professional about the patient, or relatives, and basically everything that you do, if you don't document it, it's like it never happened. So I'm going to be going through a couple of things to keep in mind when we're documenting in patient's notes. Depending on which trust you're in, you might be in a hospital which requires you to document electronically or in some certain other hospitals, we are still on paper. Today I'm going to be speaking to you quite generally, so it doesn't matter whether you're typing it up or you're writing, handwriting it. At my trust, we document on physical paper, so I'm going to be focusing more on that and showing you some examples of uh, written documentation. But to be honest, all these tips generally apply to uh, anyone who's documenting electronically or on paper. What do you document and record? So clinical records should include relevant clinical findings, any results of any investigations that you've ordered, like blood results, x-ray report, or CT scan report, etc. The decisions made and actions that are agreed. So this could be a conversation between you, yourself and a surgeon, for example, regarding a patient's surgery. And if the surgeons have said this patient is not for surgery, we would like them to be managed conservatively, then that is a discussion that you've had and that's a plan that you've agreed, then you have to document that. Who is making the decisions and agreeing the decision? So if someone else has made a decision or given you a plan about a patient, then when you document it, you have to clearly state who's given you this plan, who have you discussed it with. Conversations you've had with family or relatives, any information that were given to patients, any drugs that you've prescribed or any investigations that you've ordered. These are the things that we record or document on in the patient's notes. To be honest, I've taken this directly out of GMC guidelines. For those of you who haven't read the GMC guidelines, I would highly recommend you guys to just skim read through it, or if you've got the time, read through it. It's actually a quite a good document and it has a lot of information which might be useful for you when you start working. Especially for fifth year students or final year students who are about to write SJT, again, I would highly recommend you guys to have a read of it. It's a very useful document. Yes, it's lengthy, but just sit yourself down, skim, skim read through it. It's actually quite beneficial and has a lot of useful information in it. So now that you know what you record, let me go through some of the things to keep in mind when you're documenting. So firstly, one of the most important things to remember when you're documenting in any patient's notes is to ensure at the top of the page or wherever on that page, you've got their name, date of birth and their hospital unit number. And this has to go on every single page. So as I told you before, I work in a hospital where we still use paper documentation. So this is an example of a continuation sheet. So this is, this is the sheet in which we record down information about the patient and all the clinical documentation is done on this paper, which is called a continuation sheet. It's just a plain line sheet of paper, which looks like this, got some stuff at the top. Uh, for you to record down the patient's name and date of birth and unit number. It also has a reminder to you to put the clinical date and time that you're actually documenting in the notes. Even though some of the notes are binded together, 
there is no guarantee they're going to remain binded together. Different people are constantly using those nodes, whether that be physios or any other consultants who come to see them, any other doctors who come to review them. We're constantly taking these patients' notes. I've had so many times where documentations go missing. It's not like an electronic copy where everything is tracked and everything is all in one place. With paper, the chances are you can just disappear at times, okay? So if someone else was going to find it lying around, then they need to know whose document this is. One of my consultants also told me, also put the ward number on that. Some of these patients move from ward to ward for different reasons. It might be quite useful to know when this documentation was made and where this documentation was made. I don't know if all hospitals do it, but in my hospitals, when a patient gets admitted, there's actually a sheet filled with the patient sticker, which has their patient name, date of birth, address, hospital number, unit number on it. And I make sure every time I'm about to even write anything down on a sheet of paper, on a continuation sheet, I always ensure I put a sticker on it. That kind of saves me time from writing all the details out and it's just a habit that I have right now, so I never ever document if the patient's details are not on it. Say for example, the patient's case goes to a court or it's kind of escalated or patients made a complaint or they ask for their notes um, or they request or apply for their note, medical notes to be kind of sent to them. Patient's notes are a legal document. So if they were ever to apply for their medical uh, access to their medical notes, if you don't have their details on a sheet of paper, it's absolutely invalid. I've gone on about it so many times, I hope it's kind of drilled into your brain right now. So every documentation, make sure patient details are on them. So number two, write down who is documenting and when. Okay, so I've had so many times where I've been reading through patient notes and I find that they've given us a plan but I have no idea who's docu documented that. Was it a nurse who documented that? Was it, an F was it an F1 or was it a consultant? So make sure when you are writing in the documents you put down your grade and your speciality whether that be just putting Helen Smith F1 or Priya Biju um, consultant cardiologist you know just so put down who you are and what grade you're in it makes a whole difference when it comes to people reviewing the notes and kind of getting the whole story of a patient. Make sure you document at the time of the events happening and if you can't, make sure you do it as soon as possible after the event. So what I mean is, say if a patient's had a fall and you've gone to review them, so as soon as you've reviewed them, make sure you come and document in the notes, okay? so. It's very important that when for the patient's documentation to be in a chronological order because you might forget things that you would have mentioned if you had done it earlier, you might get some things mixed up or you might just completely forget to document. So along with recording who you are, also write down when you documented it and when you've reviewed the patient. It's very important that we put down a time so we know if something was else was about to happen to the patient we know when you documented this or when you saw the patient. So time and date is so important. Or if you're in a ward round, you might write the whole thing about the ward round and right at the end you will sign off, you'll put your signature, you'll write your name, your grade and which speciality you're in. And also, it'd be very beneficial if you also put down your contact number. So this is your bleep number or your pager if you have one. Moving on to number three which I consider to be very, 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 very important, is to make sure your documentation is legible. I know doctors are known to have absolutely disgraceful handwriting, but I just think that just needs to stop. I've heard people say, oh, your handwriting looks like a doctor. Well, that's not a compliment. That is not a compliment. If you're gonna start writing messily and consider yourself, hmm, I've reached the doctor standard, you're wrong, okay? I absolutely hate it when I have to go through patient's notes and I can't even read anything. Anything. Not even a word. It's absolutely disgusting. GMC guidelines actually say you must keep a clear, accurate and legible documentation. It actually says that. Google it. So if you're a doctor who's going to come and write really scrappily on a piece of paper, it doesn't... It's, you're not following the guidelines. Okay, forget following the guidelines. You're making lives so much harder for other people who has to go through and read your writing. 
Yes, I understand that sometimes we're all very busy and we need to write really quickly. And sometimes we're left with a sheet of paper with nothing to, you know, um, nothing to lean on. And it might be very difficult, but you just need to take that extra couple of seconds, that extra couple of minutes to make sure that you're writing legibly. I'm not asking you guys to make sure you write in beautiful calligraphy. That is That is not the point. But just make sure that it's half decent you know like it's just other if other people can read it fine then you're doing fine you don't have to make it beautiful but make sure you write neatly and i've seen doctors come and write in really small letters i don't understand like do you want us to read it with a microscope like i don't i don't understand so these are some examples uh of handwritings that i've kind of seen uh, on patient documentation um, if you can read this, please do comment down below and let me know what it says. There has been a couple of uh, scenarios where I actually called up the doctors just to clarify what they've said because I genuinely couldn't read the plan that they've written down. So just don't let it get to that stage. As F1s, you'll be writing a lot in patient notes. Most of our jobs as a junior doctor on the ward is writing. I mean, your first priority is patient care. And I believe that documentation is just as important as caring for the patients. Like you also need to make sure that you're documenting everything very clearly because it actually makes a huge difference. And you'll only understand it once you start working and you've got to um, uncode all these uh, documentations that doctors or other healthcare professionals have made. I think then you'll realize how important it is to write neatly. And number four, writing a summary. And what I mean by this is some patients can be admitted to your ward or in hospital in general for a long amount of time. There are some patients who I've looked after who's been in, on the ward for more than 40 days. Yes. And can you even begin to imagine the amount of continuation sheet their documents consist of? So some of the notes are like this big right? and that's no exaggeration. So it's very difficult sometimes to kind of know what's been going on or what's happened so far. So you might have so many documentations from different specialities and loads of discussions and loads of investigation results just muddled and, you know, just buried under these notes. And one example I can very specifically remember is one of our patients who'd been in hospital for a long time. And when this patient was going to be discharged, we were thinking about um, the follow-up plans that we need to arrange for, these, for this patient. And the job list that I got on that day was contact cardiology, find out what, if, they, if he requires any um, follow-up plans, contact microbiology, think about their long-term plan for antibiotics, contact radiology and see if they need any repeat scan or what scan they will recommend, contact several other people to kind of figure out if this patient needs to leave with a follow-up plan from that speciality. And I was thinking, oh God, I've got so many phone calls to make today. So before I did that, I thought, let me just prep the discharge letter and then I'll go on to arranging all the follow-ups for this patient. So to do a discharge letter, which I will do another video for, by the way. So um, if you're if you want to know more about how to write discharge letters, do click the subscribe button so you you get notified every time I post a video. Um, so anyways, going back to the story, I was going through the patient's notes, which was again this big, um, and I realized all these specialities have already been contacted during their stay in hospital. So there were plans made by surgeons for these patients, there were outpatient appointments made by cardiology, or there was a plan for the anticoagulation. Everything was there, but it was just buried in the notes. So what I learned from that day is, you kind of, as you go through, if you're an F1 on the ward looking after this patient and this patient has been in, been under your care for a long, prolonged period of time, it might be really useful for you to just skim read through um, their notes and make a summary of what's happened so far. I always just write a summary. I make a summary of uh, what they came in with. I write down um, all their test results, all their scan results, all their like important follow-up plans and I write it and put it into the notes. So when it comes to discharging the patients or when it comes to a consultant seeing this patient for the first time, 
they don't have to read through 70 pages. They just have this one summary sheet. So I would highly recommend you guys to do this. I've also received positive feedbacks from several consultants that I've worked with and they've always appreciated the summary sheet that I make. Last but not least, it is making a conclusion. What I mean by this is when you're having a conversation with a patient's relative or discussing a patient's case with microbiology or you've called up the surgeons to see what the plan is for a patient, they might have a long conversation with you, especially calling um, relatives or family or discussing um, something very important with a patient. The conversation might be very long and you might end up writing half a page or even a page for a patient. Right at the bottom, write conclusion or summary or you know just a couple of lines just summarizing the whole the basically the gist of the conversation so there's two ways i've done this i either write it all down okay the entire conversation i have had conversations which has filled a whole a4 sheet of paper i have okay so what i tend to do is i obviously you have to write everything in black by the way forgot to mention that write in black um black ink um and then what i tend to do is i either underline the most important things okay um or i or or and i write down a small summary right at the end so when someone's looking at it they can just quickly read through the underlined bits because it's quite important and also right at the bottom of the page i'll write down the conclusion of what i've spoken about a couple of other things that you document is if your patient has had blood cultures done you tend to stick the blood culture labels onto your documentation sheet or if you've inserted a cannula, some of the trusts expect you to leave a label in the notes to say cannula has been inserted. Same goes with catheters. And also if they've had a urine dip and the results get printed, you tend to stick it on their notes. So that's it guys. The, that's all I wanted to share with you guys about documentation. So if I've missed anything or you'd you guys would like to add anything, do drop us a comment down below. If you haven't already, do subscribe to our channel for more useful videos like this. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a video. Do share this video with your friends. Until next time, bye.